This is a reading of Out of the Dust, Autumn 1935, Part 1. Cut it deep. I went in with Daddy to see Doc Rice. Doc said, Why'd you wait so long to show someone those spots, Bayard? I scowled at Daddy. He looked at the wall. I think he didn't care much if he had some cancer and took and died. Figured he'd see Ma then. He'd see my brother. It'd be out of his hands. He'd be out of the dust. Now he's gonna wear bandages where Doc cut the cancer out the best he could. And we'd have to wait and hope Daddy didn't get help too late. I asked Doc about my hands. What, I say, can I do with them? Doc looks carefully at the mottled skin, the stretched and striped and crackled skin. Quit picking at them, he says. Rub some ointment in them before you go to bed, he says. And use them, Billy Joe, he says. They'll heal up fine if you just use them. Daddy sits on my bed and opens the boxes. The two boxes that have been in my closet for years now. The dust is over everything, but I blow it off. And daddy is so quiet when he sees some of the things. They're still so strong of ma. And we end up keeping everything but a palm full of broken doll dishes. I thought once to go through these boxes with ma, but daddy is sitting on the edge of my bed. My mouth feels cottony. I fix dinner and daddy tells me about when he was a boy. He says, I wasn't always sure about the wheat, about the land, about life in the panhandle. I dreamed of running off too, though I never did. I didn't have half of your sauce, Billy Joe, he said. And it's the first time I ever knew there was so much to the two of us, so much more than our red hair and our long legs and the way we rub our eyes when we're tired. October, 1935. The other woman. Her name is Louise. She stayed by daddy the days I was away. The first time I met her, she came to dinner bringing two baskets of food. She's a good cook without showing off. She has a way of making my father do things. When Louise came to dinner, daddy got up and cleaned the kitchen when we were done eating. He tied an apron around his middle and he looked silly like, silly as a cow, stuck in a hole. But Louise ignored that and I took a lesson from her. We walked around the farm, even though she'd probably already seen it while I was gone. She didn't ask to be taken to my favorite places, the loft in the barn, the banks of the beaver, the fields where you can see black mesa on a clear day. She told me she knew daddy and I had a history before her and she wished she had been there for the whole thing but she wasn't, and there wasn't anything to do but get it over and get on. We both stared in wonder at the pond my daddy made, and she said, a hole like that says a lot about a man. I didn't intend to, but I liked her because she was so plain and so honest, and because she made daddy laugh, and me too, just like that. And, I, and even though I didn't know if there was room for her in me, I could see there was room for her in daddy. And I asked him if he wanted me to go off to Aunt Ellis after all. Daddy said he never ever want, daddy said he hadn't ever wanted it. He said 
I was his own and he didn't like to think about what Aunt Ellis might do with me. We laughed, picturing me and Aunt Ellis together. And it wasn't a nice laugh, but it was Aunt Ellis we were talking about after all. The thing about Louise. I'll just have to watch how things go and hope she doesn't crowd me out of daddy's life now, not now. When I am just finding my way back into it. October 1935.